YouTubers, this is part two of the series on lead exposure and how to prevent it. And where we left off was in our reloading session. And we talked about the fire brass and how it has the dust that has lead dust in there and how we're handling it. Well, a good way to avoid that would be to go with the liquid or the wet tumbling, such as the Tumbler's Tumbler, which is available from Midway USA. And that's the one that has a sealed rubber gasket jar that you put your your fire brass in and also your liquid, your your water, and your Dawn or whatever it is, and a little bit of that lemon. Um, and then you put in your stainless steel pins, and then you seal up the cap and put it into your rotating tumbler. And that will clean your brass and polish it. Without any, and there are many shooters like Brandon Chin who report excellent results using the liquid or the water uh, wet tumbling, like with Tumblr's Tumblr. And even the advertisements that you read about that tumbling equipment does not mention the big advantage of the non dust exposure, non lead dust exposure using the wet tumbler. And in part one, we've already talked about the necessity of having ventilation, nitrile gloves, and respirators in our reloading room. So now let's talk about bullet casting and bullet casters. Special hello to 269SJB. That's 269SJB, who's just starting out in doing his bullet casting. Where the exposure for lead dust happens is in a gathering of raw lead supplies, especially range scrap, but any lead that can have lead dust. So handle it carefully with rubber gloves and respirators, and especially if you are going out there and digging in berms, that dust that comes up is very contaminated with lead dust. Very important to maintain your respirator and clothes change, rubber gloves, all this kind of thing uh, when you're dealing with collecting rain scrap, especially lots of rain scrap. There are shooters out there reporting that they're collecting hundreds of pounds, even thousands of pounds of rain scrap. And the more you collect, the more you have to watch out for the lead dust contamination and the time out there in the dust. You are much better off collecting smaller amounts like 15 pounds at a time or 10 pounds at a time along with your normal range shooting to collect some range scrap rather than spending an hour or longer collecting lots of lead and exposing yourself for longer periods of time to the lead dust. Now the actual casting of lead bullets or lead ingots is fairly easy to, to control your lead exposure because if you have good downwind ventilation outdoors and you're wearing a respirator and protective clothing and rubber gloves and your welding gloves you're not going to be getting any ingestion you're not going to be getting any inhalation so this can be controlled real well and only handle the lead bullets or the lead ingots when you're wearing rubber gloves and or your welding gloves. So now you might ask, well, what are your own personal experiences with lead? Now you know that the average person who doesn't deal with any lead has in their blood two micrograms per deciliter or less. And they don't really get concerned about the lead exposure till you go over 10 micrograms per deciliter. So many of you know that I've been casting and shooting a great deal for the past 40 years. And I've experienced having friends develop high lead content in their blood 
and they weren't even bullet casters, but they were avid shooters and avid reloaders, but they got high lead content. And this was many years ago now that this friend developed that. And I've been having my lead levels tested ever since. And I've been within the 2 to 10 micrograms for all that time. Well, I've delayed doing these two videos because I was waiting for my latest lead level test to come in as part of my normal physical. Now, I didn't know this, but in some states, they have regulations where anyone who gets tested for lead, and if they find out that you're over the lead allowable amount, it gets reported to the public health department, and they send out a big notice to the person and also the family of the person who has the high lead exposure. Well, it turns out that my lead levels are now twice what they were the last time I had tested, and that puts me over the limit so that I got that notice, and also the family did. This caused quite a bit of upheaval in my family because there's a lot of concern that the other family members also would have high lead. And then not only that, but the public health department wants to know if there's any chance that I'm getting exposed from work. Because if I did report any employer of mine as contaminating lead to myself, that then the public health department would report that to OSHA, and OSHA might very well raid that company. And that's what happened with the USA Brass Company because some of their employees were getting high lead and it turned out the FBI went out there and actually raided the company to look at their operations to see why they were getting high lead. Well, that was because of the brass and the lead dust, what we talked about already. Well, in my case, it's not from work. It's from shooting. So it turned out that my wife, my daughter, my son-in-law, and my two grandsons had to go and get themselves lead tested. And you can imagine what the results and the consternation would have been had they had high lead. And that caused a lot of stress upon myself until the test results w would come in, walking on pins and needles, thinking, feeling as if I was radioactive and I was... I was uh, a danger to the family. Well, I'm pleased to report that my beautiful wife, Jan, that I cuddle with and get mischievous with for the past 42 years, reports lead levels at less than 2 micrograms per deciliter. In other words, she's normal. And... The son-in-law and daughter and two grandsons that have been living with us for the past six months, that have been crawling all around me, uh, the two grandsons, their lead levels are also two micrograms or less. So that's good news. It means that the protocols for preventing exposure to other family members are good. But my own exposure is high. So the question has to be asked, what changed in the past two years since there hasn't been a problem for the past 40 years? Well, here's the changes. Closure of the last U.S. lead smelter, more pressure upon lead supplies so that I dedicated myself to increase lead gathering to increase my lead reserves. Instead of using the slow, small Coleman stove to process 10, 15 pounds of lead at a time, I started making ingots 50 pounds at a time, even going to a turkey fryer to allow me to do that. Now, I thought my range was safe because you didn't see any lead dust. But on retrospect, I look now and I see bullets hitting 
the ground in front of the armor plate, throwing up lots of dust, and then I see bullets hitting the armor plate and smashing and atomizing and creating lead dust right there on the spot, and that lead dust hangs there for a while, and I go in there, and it's the unseen dust that I go in there and I'm getting that dust. Even though I'm not raising a lot of dust from the ground, it's already there, just from bullets hitting the ground and hitting the armor plate. And I didn't realize that, but it wasn't a problem before in the last 40 years, because I didn't spend much time there. But that might have been why my lead levels was above 2. By tripling my lead gathering, I also tripled my exposure to that particular lead dust. Now, also, now I don't blame YouTube, but because of my own enthusiasm for doing YouTube videos, I've done 610 YouTube videos now over two years. Well, about two years and uh, four months. And because I'm doing all those YouTube videos, I'm spending a lot more contact in my reloading room, more time than I ever spent in there, a room that no one ever else goes into, and I'm also much closer to the range partitions and rubbing up against things, setting up cameras, uh, making contact with benches, and, and especially the partitions. Must be lots of lead dust on those partitions. Because of all my more close association with lead sources, just doing YouTube videos, and, and that many of them, also increased my exposure. And that's probably why I'm over the limit so, now. So, YouTubers, these things don't have to happen to you. Take these precautions. And now my doctor, who I met for my physical, tells me that the lead levels should drop if I reduce my exposure, and if they don't drop, more testing to, to follow. If they don't drop, there are ways to make it drop. So I'm going in for another lead test in about another week, and then he'll advise me on what to do. But he does say, well, yes, your lead levels are high, but your blood's really good, your cells are good, your renal function, kidney function is fine, Hearts go, well, basically, I'm healthy, except I've got a little high lead level. Well, this is not a good thing. We're going to do something about it. YouTubers out there, take care, and good health, good shooting to you, and I'm still in the game. But I'm lucky I caught it when I did, and only blood testing is the best way to find out if you're okay.